It is the final season for County Stadium in Milwaukee. A brand new ballpark will be ready for the Brewers next year. And the Atlanta Braves visit this venerable stadium. Got off to a shaky start last night. A 10 to 7 Milwaukee victory tonight. It's game two. Hi everybody, Pete Van Weeren along with Don Sutton welcoming you to Milwaukee. The Braves and Brewers about to go at it in game two of a series that started out in a way that has become all too familiar of late for Braves aces Tom Glavin and Greg Maddox. Maddox will be on the mound tonight trying to improve on his record, his ERA up to 5.02, but Tom Glavin flew past him last night giving up nine runs in two and two-thirds innings. He's up to 5.54 now. It's hard enough, Don, when it happens to one pitcher for a stretch, but to happen to two of your best pitchers at the same time, kind of scary. Well, I guess it's inevitable that these guys, as good as they are, would go through struggles. Pete, I think it's M&M. &M. It's mechanical and it's misfortune. The mechanical part, both of these guys rely on movement and location. Having the ball dart from place to place and being able to spot it where they want to. Lately, Javi Lopez has been setting his mid up right out here, and they've been missing all over. So when Maddox and Glavin miss, they need to miss just off the corner. And the misfortune part is when they have missed, it has been in the strike zone, and they haven't gotten away with the mistake. It is mechanical, and I think it's slight, and I would be surprised if both of these guys who have gone through shorter uh, times, shorter bad times before, don't work through it. They're too good not to. Let's add another M to that. It could get a little mental after a while, thinking about it going into that first inning, which has been a troublesome inning for both of them. We'll see how Greg Maddox fares tonight against Jim Abbott in game two of this series. We'll be back with all the action right after this. Welcome back to County Stadium. We're getting set to get it underway. Let's run through our Walmart Everstart battery starting lineup for the Braves. It is going to be Walt Weiss to lead it off. Brett Boone will be at second, batting second. It's Chipper Jones in the third spot. The cleanup hitter, Brian Jordan. Andrew Jones moves into the fifth spot. He'll be followed by Brian Hunter, who gets to start at first tonight. Eddie Perez, who always catches Maddox, will bat seventh. Gerald Williams entrenched in the eighth spot and in left field, and Maddox will bat ninth. Defensively, the Brewers have an outfield that consists of Jenkins, Grissom, and Burnett. The infield from first to round to third, Banks, Belliard, Loretta, and Cirillo. Nielsen behind the plate, and on the mound, left-hander Jim Abbott. Abbott is off to a tough, tough start. He's trying to win his first game in the National League. He hasn't won a ball game since last September. That was when he was a part of the Chicago White Sox. You see his numbers there. This is his ninth appearance. He has made three relief appearances. For Abbott, it's a change of speeds. He must, he must locate the ball, as must Greg, Greg Maddox and Tom Glavin. We were talking about them earlier. He is an absolute marvel and has had a cult following of... Uh, People who have not only admired his skill, but his determination and grit. Those are your batting orders, your starting lineups. Let's take a look at the umpiring crew for tonight's ball game. There's Joe West. He's going to be calling the balls and strikes. Angel Hernandez will be down at first base. Larry Vanover will be at second. And good guy and crew chief Randy Marsh at third. It is County Stadium. It's Milwaukee, and it will be open for only about five more months before the Brewers move into a brand new Miller Park, which is out behind them. It is coming along. It is going to be state-of-the-art. They're going to be able to uh, open and close up on the top there. But there are a lot of wonderful memories in County Stadium, not only for Brewer fans, but for some old-time Braves fans, Pete. Yeah, this is going to be uh, mixed emotions for a lot of the employees here at County Stadium. Talked to a couple of them last night who've been up in this part of the uh, ballpark, the press area, for years, all the way back to the Milwaukee Braves days. And, you know, they're talking about uh, how nice it'll be to have a little more room and to have a state-of-the-art modern facility. But, uh, boy, they're going to leave behind a lot of fond memories in this place. The Milwaukee Braves teams of the 50s and all the Hall of Famers that played for those teams, Warren Spahn, Hank Aaron, Eddie Matthews. And then the, the Brew Crew here that you were a part of there in 82 at a club that uh, got to the World Series. I had a chance to visit for about 30 minutes with one of my favorite members of the Brew Crew. Gorman Thomas was here. And June the 11th, uh, their retiring Robin Yount's uh, number here. You see it up there. It is uh, a lot of history, a lot of tradition. And if they don't move the brats across the street, I'm not going. <laughs> Well, we're all set to get underway here. Walt Weiss, a 264 hitter with an 11-game hitting streak, a career high, leading it off against Jim Abbott. 
And taking strike one on the inside corner, we are underway. A little bit on the cool side again, as it was here last night. The temperatures today only reached the upper 50s. And the wind blowing out. We saw a couple of rocket shots, both hit by Braves last night. Two of the longest home runs since they've been measuring them here at County Stadium in a history. Chipper Jones, the fourth longest ever, and Brian Plesko, the seventh longest. Well, it is relatively calm now compared to what it was like in batting practice. Everybody, including Walt Weiss, was going in the upper reaches of the stands in left center field. Now an 0-2 on the way from Abbott to Weiss. And the breaking ball misses. One ball, two strikes. Bill Garner, the manager of the Milwaukee Brewers. They're only a game under 521 and 22. They are, though, in the bottom of the Central Division, only six games back from the top spot. That's a very tightly contested division right now. A little tap toward third. Cirillo, good defender at third on the first. Nice play, one gone. Jeff Cirillo is one of the best kept secrets in baseball. Is it that the truth? You see, have you seen his batting numbers, too? 300 career hitter, outstanding defensively. Makes this play very sure of himself. Took a little bit of a circle route so his momentum would be carrying him toward first. When you do that, you can use your glove and you don't have to take the high risk bare hand pickup. One gone now, Brett Boone batting 285, eight homers. He went two for five last night. And he takes a strike at the outside corner on one. Jim Abbott making his first career appearance against the Atlanta Braves. Outside corner again, 0 and 2. He is really pitching for a spot in this rotation. He has not pitched well. He's 0 and 5, his ERA up over 9. And Phil Garner has made no secret of it. He'd love to keep him in there, but he's got to have a couple of good outings to maintain his spot in the rotation. Bounces up there, one and two. You all know the Jim Abbott story, and he is a guy that I don't know of anybody in baseball that's pull for him. He's tremendous a, courage, tremendous determination. Periodically in his career has had some spurts of near greatness. A no-hitter at one time against or for the New York Yankees when he was pitching for them. One and two still on Brett Boone. Put together some good numbers a couple of times for the White Sox and for a while with the Angels. One man out, base is empty, and a one-two count on Brett Boone. Down the right field line, it's got a slice to it. Is it going to stay fair? Yes, it will. It's going to bounce into the corner. Boone trying for two. Burnett's up with it quickly, throws towards second. It's a double for Brett Boone. I noticed in batting practice, Don, he was taking a lot of swings where it looked like he was trying to hit the ball to right and even trying to hit the ball down the line and right. Well, I think he's an alley-to-alley -alley hitter, and I think he is a better hitter when he waits a little bit longer and takes that inside-out swing. Uh, you know, if you look at Brett Boone from the camber's perspective, he may not look big to you, but he is a well-built guy and strong enough to hit it out to right center and the right field. The longer he waits, the better he has a look at it, the better contact he makes. 11 doubles on the year now for Brett Boone. That'll bring up Chipper Jones, 271, 10 homers, 31 RBIs. Home run number 10 was a monster. He hit it here last night in the ninth inning. Down the left field line, Braves bus parks out behind that left field fence. And the ball landed behind the bus and one hopped that green wall up over that little green bank. Normally there's a countdown for a launch like Whoa. that. 458 feet was the measurement on that home run. The fourth longest in county stadium history. Take and a look. Here's what it looked like. The only question when it left the bat, would it stay fair? Look where that ball went. That's incredible. And a television picture really doesn't do it justice to how far back behind that left field wall that ball traveled. And the foul pole here really doesn't go up that high. I guess you were saying the toughest part of that was the umpire being able to see, was it fair or foul? Yeah, that's a tough call for the umpire because the foul poles are fairly short here. Out in front, one and two now on Chipper Jones is Abbott. With one man out, Brett Boone down at second. Look at Ron Belliard creeping in there behind second base, trying to hold Boone close to the bag. 
in the air to right again. Another long run for Jeremy Burnett. He may get to this one a little higher this time. Able to make the catch, tagging at second, moving over to third. Brett Boone, two men gone. And a runner at third. That ball was up high enough that the wind had an effect on it and drifted it back toward him. Boone's wasn't hit that eye, so he was able to, the slice kept going. You'll see Burnett's all of a sudden slam on brakes and have to back up a little. The wind brought it back to him. Two away runner at third now for Brian Jordan, hitting 311, 11 homers, 41 RBIs. Went two for two last night, had to leave the game after his second at bat. That ankle and Achilles were acting up on him again. And you may notice it when he runs. He is not running at 100%. Says it doesn't bother him to hit. He takes the strike on one. Abbott doesn't very often come inside. Likes to work on the outside corner. And his velocity has to locate the ball been doing that to perfection here in this first inning. He has gotten a lot of call strikes in the outside corner. Was it high enough? Because it looked like it had some of the plate. I have to admit, Nielsen did do a good job of handling that for him to get that call. Let me a catcher will turn the mid over and catch that coming up toward the strike zone. There's your runner at third and the pitch on the way in the dirt. One ball, two strikes now to Brian Jordan. Still a ball and two strikes. Good catch made by a warmly dressed fan here at County Stadium. Again to right field. Boy, every right hand hitter's swing against Abbott. If a guy's going to live outside, it's, it's smart to go out and try to take that away from him. And I think what they're showing you, Pete, is that they don't think that he throws hard enough to hurt him inside. So they're still diving in. And even if it's inside, they're muscling at the right field. Still a ball and two strikes on Jordan. And the one-two on the way. And the breaking ball follow away again off to the right. It stays one and two. There's Andrew Jones waiting on deck. The one two in the air straight away center Marquise Grissom is there and that'll do it for the Braves in the first They get the double by Brent Boone get him as far as third and that's it going to the bottom half of the first no score. It's the Brewers and here's their batting order. Mark Loretta to lead it off. Ryan Banks in the second spot. Jeremy Burnitz to hit in the third. The middle of the lineup, Cirillo, Nielsen, and Grissom. Jenkins, Belliard, and Abbott will complete it. The Brewers, the last 10 days, have had the hottest bat in the National League. Now, the reason I wanted to point that out to you, if you listen at the open and you listen about Greg Maddox, if you are struggling as a pitcher, and if you're trying to locate yourself and you want to get away with some mistakes and maybe get going you don't want to face a team that's been the hottest in the league the last two weeks well here's Mark Loretta leading it off 269 with a couple of home runs he was two out of four last night and he takes a strike at the outside corner the Brewers in fact have batted around four times in the last 11 innings twice in the game last night and the final two innings of their game with Montreal prior to last night's game one ball one strike on Loretta Here's the one one now. Two and one the count. Movement and location. Neither of those two guys throw the ball straight. They have to make it move but they have to be able to locate it on the corner and out of the heart of the strike zone. And the count goes for three and one. Now last night 
Tom Glavin was in this situation a lot. Getting down in the count, 3-1, and 2-0, and oh, pitching behind in the count. Neither one of these pitchers especially effective when they're pitching that way. Here's the 3-1 now to Loretta, and he's taking. It's a strike, 3-2. and two. Yeah, they're, when they go aggressively and the hitters are more defensive, that's when you get hitters chasing those late-moving pitches that are in the neighborhood of the strike zone. But the key to that is establishing strike one for them. Now a 3-2 pitch to Loretta, rolled foul, still 3-2. and two. Braves would also like to see any other pitchers right now get through the first inning without falling into a 2-0 or 4-0 hole. First inning has been a very troublesome inning of late for all Braves starting pitchers. Game got off to a good start for the Braves last night. They picked up a run in the top half of the first inning. Went right back out and gave up four in the bottom half. Loretta rolls it up the middle. Nice stop. Brett Boone can't get it out of his glove. It'll be a base hit for Mark Loretta. He'll get to almost everything that isn't, doesn't have base hit written all over it. See, that fastball came back more into the heart of the strike zone. If Boone could have recovered, he might have had a shot. But when he dove, the ball stuck in the web of his glove. He gets frustrated when he doesn't make great plays successfully. Now Brian Banks, the first baseman, 339 for the year with a homer and six RBIs. He's kind of an interesting story out of Brigham Young, and you will notice a lot of the... Milwaukee Brewer players were drafted out of college. They have more of a college-oriented philosophy than, than high school, which a lot of the other teams seem to prefer, the high school player. But Banks, coming out of BYU, spent a long time in the minor leagues. Hunter down to short, back to first. Nobody there. Well, Maddox was there, but the throw wasn't. The throw sailed into the Milwaukee Brewers' dugout. So Loretta is retired at second. Reaching on the force play is Brian Banks, and he will take second on the throwing error by Walt Weiss. That ball just sailed on him. Right Hunter does a good job stepping inside, getting it to Weiss in a hurry. But when he threw off balance, the throw was up, away, and behind Maddox. Let's see if he has to go a little bit to the right field side to catch it. That got him out of rhythm, and he had to go over the top of Loretta with the throw. So the runner winds up at second with one man out, and Jeremy Burnett's will be the hitter. 255, 10 homers, 31 RBIs. He was two for three last night. A ball and no strikes. Yeah, Brian Banks, their runner at second in his seventh year in the Brewers organization before making it to stay with the Milwaukee team. And again, Maddox down in the count, 2-0. Oh. Burnett's only a 164 lifetime hitter against Braves pitching. He does have four career homers against Atlanta. One of them against Maddox. And it goes to 3-0. That's a good example of what we were talking about earlier when Maddox is, Maddox is just missing. That's the pitch that's just off the inside corner, and it can't be more than an inch and a half or two inches, but it is the difference. Now 3-0 pitch on the way to Burnett's, and he had the green light, came up empty, 3-1. No walks in 14 innings can be very encouraging sometimes, Pete, because it means you're locating and getting out, but no walks in 14 innings for Greg Maddox has meant that when he is missed, He's missed in the middle of the strike zone. Now a 3-1 on the way. And it's fouled down the first baseline. The count full now on Jeremy Burnett's 3-2. and two. Braves still on top of their division by a game and a half over the Mets, two and a half over the Phillies. And as Tom Glavin said after the game last night, that's really the fortunate part for the Braves right now with so many starting pitching problems at the moment. But they've been able to hang on to that top rung in the National League East. And there is the first walk. Yeah, the good by Greg Maddox in three games. The good fortune is that nobody else has gotten caught. Well, first of all, the Mets and Phillies played each other for, I think, six of those days. That helped. Yeah. They were just treading water. Yeah. Runners first and second, still only one out in the inning. Here's Jeff Cirillo, 290 with five homers and 29 runs driven in. He was one for four last night. 
They were talking about him defensively, offensively, a lifetime major league average of 302 coming into this year. Look at the walks and strikeouts. Almost identical. Does it strike out a lot? Puts the ball in play? Right on top of the plate. Look where he stands at the batter's box. A ball, no strikes on Cirillo. Smugly stops. <laughs> but he will get up there on top of home plate. We got a glove problem now with Eddie Perez. He'll have to go and get a new glove. Usually most guys have one that they call the gamer and one that they practice with. Sometimes you have to go back into the bag and pull out the one you practice with and you hope you've used it enough that it's broken in. That one looks fairly new. Well, most guys will break in a new one in spring training and then they'll have a carryover glove from 1998 that will become this year's gamer. And either some fortunate kid or some minor leaguer will get last year's gamer. One ball, no strikes on Cirillo. One zero pitch missing outside ball two two and nothing Cirillo also has that somewhat unusual batting style of pointing that bat right out at the pitcher until the delivery begins a little bit of a Robin Yount style the way he settles in see how he leans in Yount used to do that then he'll rock back on the back leg here's the 2 0 and that misses three and oh Here's the difference. Watch where Eddie Perez mitt is. Watch where he had to shift it. Two inches. It's a matter of two to three inches. The difference in locating on the corner and not getting it called. Now a 3-0 pitch on the way and it's taken for a strike by Cirillo three and one. David Nilsson on deck. He's been a hot hitter. Hitting close to 500 his last dozen games. Three one on the way and Cirillo lines it up the middle base hit center field Brian Banks will be held now at third Doug Mancellino was giving him the green light as he approached third base but then with the quick return by Andrew Jones the brakes were applied the base is loaded now with one out for Nilsson second hit in the inning off Maddox and more first inning trouble well the reason uh, Banks didn't score on this pitch or this hit was that he had to make sure Boone didn't catch it and by the time he made sure Boone didn't catch it Andrew Jones with a quick break had it in his hands and he would have been out at home base is loaded one out David Nilsson the catcher stepping in hitting 336 for the year now with seven homers 21 hits in his last 44 at bats Oh and won the count on Nilsson. It looked like, uh, and I think you were talking to someone about this, it looked like last time out Greg Maddox got a little frustrated by some inside calls that weren't going his way and got away from coming inside. Well, he's going back inside tonight to the left-handers, establish in there. That'll make the changeup more effective. He has to use both sides of the plate. Now an 0-1 to Nilsson. Popped up foul back out of play. Nothing can do. What about the mental side of it? When you're when you're a pitcher, and Greg Maddox even told you in spring training that the thing he works on in spring training is waiting for that moment when everything comes automatic to him and he doesn't have to think about things. What what kind of things do, does this do to your mind when you're not used to having problems like this and you go out there game after game after game and experience them right in the first inning? Well, the first thing you have to fight is doubting your way of doing it. I mean, he's done it successfully for a long time. But you're only human if you don't wonder if you shouldn't try something else. He got the call this time, and Nilsson is caught looking for a big out number two here in the bottom of the first inning, and now Maddox with a chance to get out of this. That's been the kind of out he's been looking to get and hasn't been getting. Cut her in, cut her in, and then the backup fastball. See Nielsen bail out on it, and he catches the inside corner. But uh, there is any, every human being that goes through uh, any time of frustration, the first thing that pops into your mind is maybe I ought to change something do something a little bit differently but I think what both Maddox and Glavin are doing is refining 
looking for something that has been mechanically a little out of whack, and neither one has reached the stage now where they're looking to put a Band-Aid on it. Marquise Grissom hitting 248 for the year. The former Brave, three out of four last night. Got off to a very slow start with the Brewers this year. But has picked it up of late. He's in a hole here, 0-2. He's also a 362 lifetime hitter against Greg Maddox. There's the corner. Remember before Eddie Perez's mitt went out to get the ball. There he just sets it. The ball comes to his mitt. That's when he gets the call. On a borderline pitch, if Eddie Perez has to move to get it, he's not going to get the call. The 0-2. Up and away. One ball, two strikes. It can be borderline, but if he lets it come into the glove, he's more apt to get the call than if he has to go get it and drag it. The one he reaches for may be closer to the strike zone than the one he just lets come to him, but that's the one he's going to get called. Here's the one-two now. He got him looking in the outside corner, and that was a little more Maddox-like in the first inning. Even though he gave up a couple of hits and a walk, he got the strikeouts of Nilsson and Grissom to get out of the inning, stranding three, and there's no score after one. Radio Telecast is presented by authority of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Going to the top half of the second inning, a noticeable sense of life in the Atlanta dugout after that first inning for Greg Maddox. That can really pick a club up when you're having your struggles of late and then you come out and get into trouble right away but pitch out of it. And you can see a lot of hand clapping and back slapping and let's go guys in that dugout when Maddox and the rest of the club got back in there. We tend to separate offense and defense but sometimes a great defensive play will ignite the offense and an offensive outburst is a shot in the arm for a pitcher and for the defense. By the way that glove that uh, that catcher's mitt that was broken jack of all trades Jeff Porter quickly to rescue. Usually the trainer or the assistant trainer is also the Minda of leather. Well, here's Andrew Jones leading off the second. He could use a base hit, just one for his last 16. Average at 270 now with eight home runs. One ball, one strike on Andrew. Inside corner, it's one and two. I think Andrew is not upset with the call, just surprised that Abbott came inside on him. That's the first fastball he's thrown inside to a Braves hitter yet. Here's the one two. And the breaking ball bounces up there, two and two. Brian Hunter waiting in the on deck circle, then Eddie Perez here in the top of the second. Back up the middle. Belliard can't get to it. It's in the center field. And that's hit number two off Jim Abbott. A leadoff single for Andrew to start the second. That'll bring up Brian Hunter. First baseman, Brian Hunter. Hunter, 250 on the air with three homers. I don't remember Jim Abbott ever having much of a good move. He does pay attention to the runners, but doesn't have anything tricky about his move, nothing near a balk. Hunter down in the counter on one. Well, it's a remarkable story. This game is plenty tough enough when you've got everything going for you and obviously Jim Abbott had to overcome a lot of obstacles along the way and and did you know I I heard him interviewed once and I thought he made a statement that uh, was very telling about him he said that he that, and, I, and I know I'm going to paraphrase it poorly and I apologize to any friend or family of his if I do it mistakenly but what I remember his saying is it's not like it's a handicap that a handicap is somebody who loses something that they've had. He's played by a different set of rules. He said, it's not like I've been handicapped. It's just I 
performed by a different set of roofs, which I thought was very telling about him. I, I think I, I remember that interview that you're referring to, and I think that the, the hardest part for him, I mean, he obviously had confidence in himself and determination in himself to do it. I would think the hardest part would be convincing others yes. to give you a shot. The 0-2 on the way to Hunter, deep to left field. This one's going to be out of here. Two-run homer, Brian Hunter, and the Braves are on the board. That is home run number four of the season for Hunter. It'll score Andrew Jones ahead of him, and it's 2-0 Atlanta. Well, everything is going to carry well to from right center to the left field line tonight. And when you don't throw hard enough to get anybody off your off-speed pitches, you can go down and just set on breaking stuff. That was a knee-high breaking ball in the heart of the plate that Brian Hunter dug out. Almost looked like he had one hand on the bat when he hit it. Now Eddie Perez. So just what we were talking about coming back, that extra little bit of life in the Braves dugout after Maddox recorded those two strikeouts. And now the offense has gotten it going here in the top of the second. Fouled away by Perez to count 0-2. You never know what one at-bat or what one pitch or what one instant in a game is going to turn around a player who's having a tough time of it. On a bad ball club, it doesn't make any difference. On a good ball club, one part of it feeds off the success of the other. Here's the 0-2. High in the air to right center. And Burnett's for the catch, one away. That'll bring up Gerald Williams. Eight number 27. Gerald at 256. He had three homers, 14 RBIs. He was two for four last night. Played here in Milwaukee a little over a year and a half ago. One ball, no strikes. I think a lot of people forget that this is where Hank Aaron wrapped up his career. Yeah, he came back here, finished up with the Brewers. Here's the 1-1 one -one now to Gerald Williams, filed back. Something that might be a little alarming. You were talking about what Phil Garner was looking for and what he needed out of Abbott. What might be a little alarming to him is Abbott is now giving up a home run about every four innings. That's a lot of home runs. Here's the one two in the air to center. The sure hands of Mark Marquise Grissom are out there to make the catch. Easy for me to say. Two gone and the batter will be the pitcher Greg Maddox. It was four out of 16. With a homer in four RBI. And a triple. Let's not forget that. Our radio producer for our Braves broadcast came up with a quote that has been in a number of national publications said that Greg Maddox hitting a triple has now surpassed the Kentucky Derby as the most exciting two minutes in sports. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great, great line. And it came right after. I mean, it was yeah, immediate it that he popped that in there. Yeah, it did. <laughs> that quote uh, appeared as the quote of the week in Sports Illustrated. And Dave had Greg sign that particular issue for him. <laughs> Dave Baker, our radio producer and engineer. And Maddox the author that? of that quote. And Maddox's response was, uh, first when he said it was, oh, dude, I got her up quicker than that. <laughs> Only by a little. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Two men out, two runs in. Two and one now on Maddox. goes to three and one you could see the patch on the sleeve of Jim Abbott and all the Brewers commemorating the final year of baseball here at County Stadium 46 years 53 through 99 the 
theme that is on all the publications and the bumper stickers this year says bringing down the house and they will literally do that at the end of this year to make way for the new ballpark they're also dedicating this year to Bob Betts who spent 23 years here as the Braves public address announcer in the air to right and some carry to it. Bernitz has to go back quite a ways, almost to the warning track to get that one for out number three. And that'll do it for Atlanta in the second. But a Brian Hunter home run has given the Braves a 2-0 lead as we head to the bottom half of inning two. He requested Leo Mazzotta to have the radar gun out, checking not only mechanics but velocity. John is eligible to come off the disabled list a week from today and pronounced himself pleased with his throwing session today. That's encouraging. Jeff Jenkins leads off here for Milwaukee in the bottom half of the second takes ball one low and outside. Jenkins 313 for the year. He has seven home runs. He'll be followed by Ron Belliard and then Jim Abbott. Right back to Maddox. A little more typical of a Greg Maddox pitch ball game one down uh, you mentioned uh, getting those call strikes was more typical I think it's encouraging to see one of those more outs more ground outs handled by the second baseman shortstop and Maddox than any other place on the field when he's on here's Ron Belliard now and if you're wondering yes he is a relation to Raphael Belliard the longtime brave he's a cousin of Rafi's and one of the most highly thought of youngsters in the Brewers organization. Yeah, he is playing in place of Fernando Vina, who I understand was activated off the disabled list uh, this evening. And they said in the paper here in Milwaukee, Belliard will be going back to the minor leagues for some more seasoning. Yeah, they want him playing every day. He's only 24 years old. Last year at Louisville, a 321 average, 14 home runs, 73 RBIs. Not much bigger than Raphael Belliard. He's 5'8", 180, but he does have a lot of power for a little guy. Numbers down a little bit in Louisville, but he showed him last year that he's capable of playing well there. <laughs> 0 2 on Ron Belliard. One man out, Braves up 2 0. We're in the bottom half of inning two. Up the middle, that'll go for a base hit. Third hit allowed by Maddox. And it'll bring up the pitcher, Jim Abbott. Abbott's first year in the National League, so it's the first year that he has been set up to the plate. He's 0 for 8. He does have one sacrifice, but remarkable. Gets the bunt down right out in front. Perez will go to first. Abbott gets it done. Moves Belliard down to second with a 2-4 sacrifice. Nice job on the bunt. Deadens it nicely. That's pretty darn good form. So the Brewers have a runner in scoring position now with two men gone back at the top of the order. Mark Loretta. He had an infield hit his first time up. He takes ball one low and away. He's out of Northwestern University. Boy, he went a long way away and changed climates to go to college, didn't he? He's he out of the California. La Cañada, Pasadena area. Looped into shallow right field. Jordan coming on. He's there. He's got it. And that's all for Milwaukee in the bottom half of the second. A base hit by Belliard is all they come up with. Still 2-0 Atlanta as we head to the third.
missing a five ball one. Log on to CNNSI.com for in progress box scores at CNNSI.com, the ultimate address for sports. Weiss grounded out to third, first time up. Outside corner in the count, even one ball, one strike. Weiss faced Abbott over in the American League, went over four against him. Into right field. Burnitz. I don't know as though he picked that ball up right away. He, he broke the wrong way on the ball and then didn't very quickly recover. And he's he's upset with himself. I don't know whether the sound might have fooled him or whether he lost that ball a little bit in the lights. It could have been loose. It's it's right now twilight time, and that ball never got very high. So it looked like he took a step back, and then by the time uh, he recovered, I think he thinks he might have had a shot at catching it. Because the wind held it up in the air a little bit longer. I'll bet you it held it up longer than he thought it was going to. Hit number four off of Abbott. And here's Brett Boone. Now the runner going. They've got him hung up. Nilsson throws down to second. They throw back to first and got him. So Walt Weiss, I think, realized he had not gotten a very good jump. And I think that's a play he works on, trying to get back to first base make the catcher throw down to second if he doesn't get the jump he's after I wonder if he somebody might have missed a hit and run because that was late delay uh, developing it wasn't like he took off running on his steal he took off it and took a look back toward home plate so he is out number one the count on one on Brett Boone who doubled his first time up one ball one strike yeah that had all the elements of a missed sign somewhere didn't it One one on the way. We've seen Walt do that before, though. If he, even on a straight steal, if he gets a poor jump, take about six, seven steps, then stop, try to get the catcher to throw down to second, and as soon as the throw starts down toward second base, he breaks back to first, and occasionally he makes it. Well, it's it's all timing. It's knowing where you have to go, and then uh, going just as soon as that catcher commits to throw to second, and he almost pulled it off on that one. Two and two now, and Brett Boone. The one pump by Nielsen may have caused him to take an extra step. I was a little surprised Nielsen didn't just charge out to him. He unloaded that throw a long way down the Yeah, center. he did. You will normally see a catcher in a play like that just run directly toward the runner and make the runner commit. Still two and two on Brett Boone. Braves up two nothing. They've out hit the Brewers four three. the 2-2 on the way to Boone bouncing ball off Abbott's glove and that's going to get through in the center field so Brett Boone is two out of two and that's hit number five of the night for Atlanta Third base. that'll bring up Chipper, Chipper Jones who fly to right his first time see that little shake of the head by the runner at first Brett Boone kind of a negative shake Almost makes you believe that he's the one that missed the side, and he's upset about it. And he shook his head after a quick conversation yeah, with Glenn Hubbard. Glenn Hubbard over there. No one one. One man out, runner at first. Chipper Jones down on the count, nothing and two. Swing, he took at that ball, gave you the, almost gave you the impression he was looking for that curveball to break more in over the plate instead of straight down. Nothing and two on Chipper Jones. One ball, two strikes. 
If the wind picks up and, and blows a little bit more, we don't want you to get dizzy watching this shot because the camera in center field, when it gets windy out here, will get a little bouncy. The one two on the way, line down the right field line, it's going to be a foul ball. And speaking of center field, this ballpark for the last few years, quite a few years, has had a very different look out there than it used to. When this ballpark first opened, when the Milwaukee Braves were playing here, center field was an open area with a grove of trees out there. And it gave it a very distinctive look. It was a very different looking ballpark from any of the others. And they filled it in. I think they filled it in for Packers football. What allowed them to sell some more seats because you couldn't see, see any baseball fans out there. That's the hitter's background. On the ground, a third might be two. Well, this has happened to the Braves a lot of late. Five, four, three, double play hit into by Chipper Jones to end the inning. Well, the Braves get two hits and have nothing to show for it. Somebody misses a hit and run sign, and the Braves hit into another double play. Still two nothing. Braves up two nothing. It'll be Brian Banks, Jeremy Burnett, Jeff Cirillo. Leading off here against Greg Maddox. Banks hit into a force play his first time up. And takes ball one from Greg. Count goes to 2-0 and oh on Brian Banks. I think uh, one of the things we haven't discussed, Pete, the other side from the opponent's side what a struggle like this for a guy like Maddox does for them that's well hit right center field that's going to go all the way to the wall Banks rounding first heads for second Andrew gets the throw back in it's a double for Brian Banks hit number four off Greg Maddox what it does is make the opponents much more aggressive because all of a sudden after spending years of frustration taking swings and getting nothing out of it you find uh, the opposition say, well, wait a minute, he's human. He may throw me more pitches in the strike zone than I think. And what we've seen is, is hitters taking fewer and fewer strikes from Greg Maddox. Remember how many call strikes he's always gotten, but they take fewer and fewer. And there was a case on that pitch of a pitch with late movement, but the late movement brought it right back over the heart of the plate. That's what we were talking about earlier. Location and movement are the two keys Movement thrown in the middle of the plate. It better be big movement. Jeremy Burnett's walked his first time up. He takes ball one. Almost hit him. 2-0. I don't care who the pitcher is, when you see one there, it's usually just hanging on to it a little too long. The pitch is called for inside, and you just want to make sure you get it in and don't leave it back out on the plate so it's easy to hang on to it too long. Now a 2 0 pitch, and that misses low ball three. Maddox fell behind Banks 2 0. Now it's 3 0 on Burnett's Jeff Cirillo on deck. Here's the 3-0 on the way, and he walked him on four straight. You saw that graphic there of the home runs last year, and the guy uh, who had the record, 1982, Gorman Thomas. What am I, he wore number 20 back then, and one of my favorite teammates I ever had, and spent a lot of time at the ballpark today. He was down visiting with us on the field. Easily recognizable. Yes, he is. <laughs> Well, here's Jeff Cirillo now, runners first and second as the Brewers try to get something going off Maddox here in the bottom of the third. Cirillo, a base hit his first time up. There are two things you can almost always count on during batting practice here at County Stadium. The Brewers are in town and taking batting practice. Somewhere on the field you'll find Gorman Thomas and Johnny Logan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Johnny was in the Braves locker room and the Braves arrived at the ballpark yesterday greeting everyone. Still lives here in Milwaukee, long time all-star shortstop for the Milwaukee Braves and I think former sheriff here now a scout with the Brewers nothing and one on Cirillo Banks and Burnett are your runners 
There goes Banks. The throw to third by Perez is late. Stolen base, Brian Banks. His second steal of the year. He timed Greg Maddox perfectly on that. Greg Maddox just gave him one look on the pitch before. He gave him only one look, and as soon as he saw Maddox's head start toward plate, he took off. And I believe he gave a signal to the hitter, too, because you don't normally see a hitter on his own square and bunt to protect. So somehow he... He, re he reached up, looked like he touched his left shoulder just before taking off. The 0-2 on the way now to Cirillo, and it's a little bit high. One ball, two strikes. That would be something that a Phil Garner team would do. It would be something that is uh, a part of the Milwaukee Brewer history, too. Stealing signs, uh, being aggressive, tipping off your teammates when something is going on. Here's the 1-2. Missing upstairs, two and two. We were recalling some of the days of Harvey's wall bangers talking to Gorman Thomas today, and, and he was telling some friends about a time that there was a base runner at second. The Brewers were so good at stealing signs. A base runner at second who went to third on a wild pitch and got chewed out. Because he <laughs> wanted him to stay at second and tip off the pitches. Two balls, two strikes now to Cirillo. Runners now first and third. Still two and two. Don told you he doesn't strike out much. That's Doug Mancellino, the third base coach. Here's the 2-2 now. Line caught by Hunter. Double play. How about that? That ball was hit hard by Cirillo. Hunter just happened to be in the right spot. And there was nothing Jeremy Burnett could do about it. Boy, he smoked this. But right at Brian Hunter. Now, if I... Hunter is holding the runner, that's a base hit. Or if Burnett's had followed when Banks stole third. So it winds up being a double play. That runner still at third with two outs now. And David Nilsson, the batter, he struck out his first time. One of two big strikeouts that Maddox got back to back with the bases loaded to get out of the first inning. One ball, no strikes. And you can hear a little of the frustration, perhaps, from Greg Maddox on that last pitch. And the reason for it, you say it's only ball one, but it's been ball one to just about every hitter. He's been behind in the count to almost everyone. Here's the 1-0. And even with one and one. Remember, he told us one of his keys was pointing his chin right over the front side. And I've been paying attention a little bit more this inning. It looks like he's doing that. He's bending. Here's the one one. Butted foul. How about that? That's the last thing you expect from a big Hulk like David Nilsson. Big power hitter. You got your infield back. He gets that bunt down. The run might have scored. He might have had a base hit. That's one of those high risk plays that you you, you kind of hate to see. Uh, if you're a manager, you kind of hate to see a big bopper do it. Because if you don't, if you do it, it's one of those things. If you do it, you get it down. It's a great play. If you don't, you wait to the strike. One ball, two strikes. And down on strikes goes Nilsson. Second time he has struck out today against Maddox, and Maddox once again gets out of an inning, leaving a runner at third. Still 2-0 as we head to the fourth. Time for our Aflac trivia question as we head into the fourth inning, and here it is. Who has hit the most career home runs at County Stadium? Hmm. A lot of candidates for that. A That's lot a of question. candidates. You uh, think about it. Next half inning, we'll give you the answer. In the meantime, we're going to think about it, too. Boy, that's... I don't know. Was it from the Braves era? Was it from the Brewers era? Got some choices to make in the answer to that question. Brian Jordan will lead off here in the top half of the fourth inning. He fly to center his first time up. 
He'll be followed by Andrew Jones, then Brian Hunter, who's two-run homer, has given the Braves the lead here. In the air, straight away, center and shallow. Marquise Grissom playing a lot deeper than is normal for Marquise to play. Remember when he played of Atlanta? How shallow he played? I'll bet you part of it has to do with the fact that the, there is a wind blowing. Even a ball like that becomes routine as deep as he was because it holds it up for him. You can tack about 10 or 15 feet onto anything hit up in the air. One pitch, one out here in the fourth. Now Andrew Jones, he had a base hit. Back in the second, came around to score. Inside corner, 0 and 1. Another fly ball, this one to right center field, Burnitz. Has it, and on three pitches, Abbott has the first two outs here in the top half of the fourth inning. Braves back home on Friday. The Dodgers will be in town. There will also be something brand new for you at Turner Field. It'll be Turner Beach opening night. A new outdoor gathering spot at Turner Field. It's on the right field club level patio overlooking the field. It'll feature beach music, tropical palm trees, a cabana bar, picnic patio area, specialty food concessions. That's Turner Beach, another spot to visit on your next trip to Turner Field. It'll open this Friday. And a nine-inning view of the Braves' bullpen, too. You're going to be right above it. Brian Hunter, a two-run homer his first time up. And it's two balls, no strikes now on Brian. Good off-speed pitch makes it two and one. Well, he's changed speeds very well tonight, and the pitch, he's gotten away with a couple pitches. The one that Brian Hunter hit out, not a bad pitch. Just something you have to give Hunter credit for going down and digging out. Sharply hit. That's a fair ball down the left field line toward the corner. Hunter rounding first. Jenkins up with the ball. Brian Hunter will have himself a double. It's going to be a ground rule double. That ball picked up by a fan out there, I guess. Yeah. That's all it would have been anyway. So no harm done. Fourth double of the year for Hunter. What they encourage you to do, though, is not pick it up because it could possibly spin around in the corner. That's another pitch down about knee high that Hunter went down and got. Once this ball gets into the corner, they encourage fans not to get it because it could spin off the wall. That ball's still in play. You made it a ground rule double, but you took away the possibility of a triple. And the batter will be Eddie Perez with Gerald Williams on deck out to the mound, Nilsson. Got a base open here. Let's see who they'd rather pitch to, Perez or Williams. Perez fly to right his first time up. Well, you get the two things you have to evaluate. You can get more outs on worse pitches with Gerald Williams, but you could also have him hit pitches that he probably wouldn't swing at. Two hop to the shortstop, Loretta. And that takes care of the Braves in the fourth. A two-out double by Brian Hunter. All the Braves come up with in the fourth inning. Still 2 nothing. Hit the most career home runs at County Stadium. Well, it was one of our picks, but I got to admit, Eddie Matthews was not my first choice. 211 here. He had 512 career homers, 493 as a Brave. He played here in Milwaukee from 1950. 3 to 1965. Eddie Matthews, the answer to your athletic trivia question. That was a good one. You, you could have picked him. You could have picked Hank Aaron. Would have been a good guess. Robin Yount. Robin Yount would have been a good guess. Marquise Grissom, first pitch swing. A little tap to third. Chipper Jones across to first. And Grissom is over two. One out in the fourth inning. They're very excited here in Milwaukee about Robin Yount going into the Hall of Fame this summer. And one of the reasons they are is that he will be the first true Brewer Hall of Famer. He's going to go in with the Milwaukee Brewer emblem on his cap on the plaque. 
He played his entire 20-year Major League career here in Milwaukee, a two-time MVP. And while there have been other Milwaukee Brewers, including yourself, Don, who played here for a couple years, uh, so did Hank Aaron, of course, so did Raleigh Fingers, who are in the Hall of Fame. Robin Yount, the first start-to-finish Brewer. And they're very excited about that as well they should be here this summer. And I'm very happy for him. He is one of the best players I ever had the privilege of playing with and one of the best people. And a terrific, terrific family. I was reading some information on Yount that the Brewers have distributed this year, and there are a lot of little things. He, again, any, well, it, it seems to be true of anybody that plays in Milwaukee. Uh, Jeff Cirillo, a good example of a guy who's been a really good player for the last four or five years, and you hardly hear about him. You heard about Yount, but mainly through that 82 season and through the two MVP years he had. There are a lot of things that he accomplished in the game that didn't get a whole lot of uh, publicity at the time, of course, as 3,000 hits did. Well, because he wasn't in New York, Boston, Chicago, or L.A. But you know what? He didn't want to be in those cities. Robin Yell is a remarkable guy in that he was he is from Southern California, but the most contented I ever saw him in the in the four or five years that I played with him and against him was when he was right here. Uh, he just he just enjoyed it. He gave Bud Selig almost gave him a heart attack here one day. Here's the one two to Jenkins and it's low two and two. Yelt is the franchise at that time. And we had uh, won in 1982. We'd gone to the World Series, so they have a parade, and they have a, a right out on the mound. There's a dais set up where we're all there to sit, and the fans came out. They invited them. And Yount is missing. All of us are seated there up on the podium, and there is no Robin Yount. So out in left field where you were pointing out uh, that home run last night, the gate opens. Here comes Robin Yount and a Harley Davidson <laughs> roaring around the stadium and skids to a stop right in front of it. I, and you could you could hear Bud Selig's heart beating. Fourth strikeout for Greg Maddox as Jeff Jenkins is caught looking. And that'll bring up Ron Velliard, a base hit his first time up. MVP two of those years over those 20 years that he played was Robin Yount. 1989, he was a center fielder. In 1982, and he won the MVP, he was a shortstop. Only a couple of guys have ever been two-time MVPs at two different positions. Stan Musial, the last one before Robin Yount. Musial at first base in the outfield. But a lot of the other accomplishments that just didn't get a lot of you know in 89 just to show you how overlooked he was. He was the MVP of the American League in 89 was not chosen for the all-star team that year. Into shallow center. Brett Boone there for the catch. And one of the better innings of the night for Greg Maddox. One, two, three, go the Brewers. Still 2 nothing Atlanta. For the top half of the fifth inning, Bernie Brewer having a good time out there. They're going to take him with them when they move across the street? I don't know. I didn't ask today. I would, I would venture to say he'll be over there somewhere. I'm not sure what the setup is going to be for him. But that's been a fixture here for such a long time. A home run and Bernie slides down into the mug. There's some nice luck, nice looks in headgear here tonight. Have you noticed? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> we'll show you a couple of them in a moment here. Gerald Williams leading off here in the fifth inning. He fly to center his first time up. Headgear very big up in this part of the country. They've got the cheese heads for the Green Bay Packers. You've seen them. Routed foul. One ball, one strike. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Into right field. Burnitz had trouble with the lights on that one, but stayed with it. A step closer, a step further back, and he would have really been handcuffed. There's a bank of lights up above us. This ball comes right out of it. And right about there, it went in and out of him just as he grabbed it. One away, and that'll bring there up Greg Maddox, who flied to right his first time up. That looked like one of those uh, kind of humpback liners that went up through it and came back down through the lights. Here's the 1-0 now to Greg. Down the right field line. That ball's pretty well hit. It is a foul ball. 
only fouled by an inch or two. That one almost got out of here. Like Boone's, that ball not hit high enough for the wind to affect it. Remember the one hit by, I believe it was Chipper Jones. The ball just kind of hung up in the air and drifted back. But Maddox has never got very high. That is, oh man, that's about six inches to the right. But Angel Hernandez went down the line and was perfect position to make the call. So it just goes as a noisy strike. One ball, one strike on Greg. Now it's one and two. That could have been a very tough call for the first base umpire, but Angel Hernandez turned and sprinted about 30 feet down the line and was in perfect position straddling the line to watch it. Little chopper back to Abbott. Two down. And we've talked about Jim Abbott and how he is playing with the hand missing off his right arm. He makes this play so routinely that I guarantee you, if you don't think about it, you don't notice it, right? That's that's amazing. It's a it, routine play. It's a routine play. And he makes it routine. That's the key. Two men gone. And back to the top of the order now in Walt Weiss. He is grounded out to third and singled and was caught stealing. And somebody missed a hit and run sign. We think we know who. One ball, no strikes. That one got away from Abbott. Two and oh. Abbott has given up uh, six hits, but if Phil Garner is looking for something positive out of Jim Abbott, he's gotten it to this point. Right down the middle for a strike, and the count goes to two and one on Walt Weiss. Great one. Yeah, this is by far the best start that Jim Abbott has made this year. He had a couple of relief appearances that were effective. And he's had a base runner in every inning except this one. Full count now, three and two on Weiss. And I don't really think he's made any glaring mistakes. I think there's a time when you can blame pitchers for an outburst of runs. There's another time when you give hitters credit, and I think you have to give Brian Hunter credit for hitting a good pitch. Well, he loses Walt Weiss with two outs. That is the first walk. Given up by Abbott, and that'll bring up Brett Boone, who has doubled and singled two out of two. Got his average back up to 293 for the year. Inside corner, 0-1 on Brett. You don't see too many straight fastballs out of uh, Jim Abbott, but when you're throwing at the velocity he's throwing, it's important that he not throw many straight fastballs. He throws a lot of cutters in on right-handers or running fastballs. Two men out, runner at first, top half of the fifth inning. Braves have six hits, Milwaukee four. Here's the 0-1. Right back up the middle, base hit center field. Weiss will have to stop at second. And that's a three for three night now for Brett Boone. And three good at bats. He has really waited on the ball well. Hasn't pulled off of it. Breaking ball comes into him. Weight stays back. Nice way to hit off-speed pitches right back up the middle. 
See, if you watch him, it looks like he steps in the bucket. The foot goes down the third baseline a little bit, but from the belt up, it stays closed toward the pitcher. Watch the foot go down, but look at his upper part close up. Seven hits now for Atlanta, and that'll bring up Chipper Jones, who's fly to right, hit into a 5-4-3 double play, and fouls this one off the count on one. Two more games in this series. Tomorrow night, it'll be Bruce Chen against Hideo Nomo. And then an afternoon game here on Thursday, Kevin Millwood against Scott Carl. So Dallas Perez gets the start against the Dodgers when the Braves return home Friday night. Sharply hit to short, Loretta will take the short route, and Abbott gets out of it again, leaving a couple of runners aboard, a walk and a hit. And two men left, still 2-0 Atlanta as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Bottom half of the fifth inning, Joe Simpson, Skip Carey with you now. And so far, so good for Maddox. Pitched out of trouble a couple of different innings. He had a 1-2-3 inning already tonight, and that's kind of news for him. In fact, over his last five starts, he's only had seven 1-2-3 innings. But he has pitched out of trouble brilliantly tonight with four strikeouts. Jim Abbott pops one foul into the seats 0-1. Tell you what, this it's awful hard to root against this Abbott, isn't it? He's been a great competitor. He's in his ninth big league season with one hand. He got a pretty good hack up there, too. It's 0 2. Just think about how hard it is to get to the major leagues for anybody. But to get there with only one hand, he's just absolutely defied logic and the odds. And he strikes out. He's 0 for 9 on the year. Strikeout number 5 for Maddox. Mark Loretta, the batter. After he had some early troubles in his last start against Chicago, he retired 12 of the last 13 he faced and got into a groove, much like he's in right now. Hey, though, Skip, after when he struck out Nielsen and Grissom in the first inning with the bases loaded, it was like, there it is, found something. You know, his changeup was hitting some good spots. And then, then in the third, he got very lucky when Jeff Cirillo lined viciously into a double play to get him out of a mess. But much better, that's for sure. Two and one the count here. Something else I've liked about what he did tonight when he was in some jams is he wasn't afraid to walk Burnett's. He's walked him twice. Over the pitcher's head. Tough play for Boone. Can he make it? Yes. Good play. Had a little trouble getting it out of his glove, but he got it done. Two down. Brett Boone likes challenges. He likes tough plays because he knows he can handle it. He actually flipped that ball from his glove to his bare hand. Earlier tonight, he made a great stop on a ball up the middle out on the grass, but couldn't quite get it out of his glove. Good stretch by Hunter, too. Brian Banks is hit into a fielder's choice. He has doubled. He has stolen a base. Boy, this is a quiet place. As far as the fans are concerned. Sound effects are loud, but not the fans. One ball, no strikes. And Greg is behind 2-0. Oh. Want to wish a happy birthday to former New York Giant Don Little, who's celebrating his 74th birthday tonight. Popped up foul. Chipper gives it a look, but has no play. Little was a pretty good pitcher in his day back in the 50s. He's been battling some health problems. Hope you get well, sir. Now, who is this guy? That's uh, Bernie Brewer. Bernie Brewer. And he's up there on that scaffolding, right? The chalet. Mm -hmm. Ooh, good pitch. 
He'll slide down a little slide into the brew down there by the barrel if anybody hits a home run for the Milwaukee team. Oh, can he frolic in that? Two out walk. That's not one Greg wanted to make. Not with two out and Burnett's coming up. But I think there have been times, Skip, going back to some other problems he had earlier tonight where he did walk Burnett's where he's like Matt or like Lavin, so stubborn they don't really want to walk anybody and sometimes it that becomes a problem for him because then they make too good a pitch that's been being hit lately. Burnett's just three out of 18 against Maddox but one of those was a homer here last year. Two seven and one for the Braves 0 four and 0 for the Brewers. Popped him up. That'll end the inning. Who wants it? Wald Weiss calls. Floyd drops the ball. Everybody safe. It hit right in his glove and he dropped it. His second air of the night is ninth of the year. You don't see big leaguers have that happen to him very often, especially somebody the caliber of Walt Weiss. But he was never able to get under and settle under this ball because the wind's still blowing out at about 18 miles an hour. And you kids at home who we tell all the time to use two hands, here's a good reason why. It happens to big leaguers too. So Jeff Cirillo gets another chance with two out. A two air game for Weiss. That doesn't happen often. And his ninth of the year. Cirillo has singled and lined into that double play. So a break keeps the inning alive for Milwaukee. Rounder foul over by the Atlanta dugout and off his foot. It's 0 and 1. This has been a spot though in the past skip where anytime somebody made a mistake, made an error behind Maddox, he was always there to cover it up. He would get you off the hook. <laughs> 0 and 1 the count. Two. Greg is quickly out in front. Cirillo with a career batting average of over 300. One of those guys that's kind of a slasher. He's not a prolific home run hitter, although he'll, he'll hit some line drive homers. But boy, he keeps that front shoulder on the plate. Looks for the ball out away from him. And then if you do throw it inside, he's still quick enough to turn on the ball. The 0-2 pitch from Maddox. Lined into left field on the run. Williams dives. Did he make the catch? Yes, he did, and the inning is over. Cirillo hits another line drive and has nothing to show for it. And Maddox gets out of the mess. No hits, no runs, an air, and two left at the end of five. Braves lead it two to nothing. Here at County Stadium, and it's time for tonight's Budweiser game summary. Greg Maddox got out of some trouble in the first inning, left uh, the bases loaded, as a matter of fact, got a couple of strikeouts, and then got some help in the top of the second, the only runs of the game, on a Brian Hunter home run. He hit an 0-2 curveball into the seats over 400 feet. Brett Boone has five hits in his last five at-bats, including three tonight. And other than a couple of errors by Walt Weiss, things clipping along here pretty good as Maddox has pitched out of some jams and holding the Brewers scoreless so far. That's your Budweiser game summary. Brian Jordan will lead off the sixth inning for Atlanta. Jim Abbott goes to work. A strike is in there 0-1. I had to laugh today, Joe, reading through their media guide, and I know you did too. It's interesting how they do things. Ex explain things. Now if I can find what I'm talking about, it'll be a good deal. Ground ball to short. Booted. Recovered. Got it. One out. Shortstop's been a shaky position tonight. One away. 
Jordan slowly going back to the dugout, but he was getting down the line pretty well despite that sore leg and Achilles tendon. Hit the bag a little funny. Stretched it out a little bit, but he appears to be okay. This new ballpark that's coming here weighs 500,000 tons, or as they put it here in Milwaukee, I pop short right. On comes Burnett's. He's there, two down. 62,500,016 pound bowling balls is how much this thing weighs. You got to have perspective. Number of baseballs needed to fill Miller Park, 4,656,000,000. I'm not going to believe it till they do it. Here's Brian Hunter, the hero offensively for Atlanta tonight. His two run homer is the difference in the game. He has also doubled. I often wonder if they do those things, if they do those estimates in case things don't work out. You know, it'd be a good warehouse for Rawlings to store baseballs. <laughs> or Brunswick. Uh huh. The 2 0 pitch. It's low. It's 3 0. It looks like it's going to be beautiful. It's not going to be completely enclosed. It's just going to be a roof so they can keep the rain and snow off. They turn him loose, but he fouled it off. Eddie Perez is next. 3 1 the count. The new Seattle ballpark very similar to that with a retractable roof. It's supposed to be ready in mid-July. Hunter is aboard with two out. Perez the banner. Abbott records his second walk of the night. I think this is the longest Abbott has gone in a game, isn't it? Five and two-thirds is his longest stint of the year. He did it twice. I think the pitching coach wanted to make a change and Phil let him know what he thought about that. Abbott has pitched all right. <laughs> he has. I wonder how many times he had to practice removing and replacing the glove to make it the second nature it is now. One ball, no strikes. The way he gets the ball out of the glove is amazing to me that he never drops it. He's had a couple of balls hit back at him tonight where he really didn't have time to get the glove on. Look out into the dirt. They chase Hunter back to first with a bluff of the throw. Two balls, no strikes, and Dave Nilsson to the mound to talk to Abbott. Abbott's thrown a lot of breaking balls tonight. His best success with his fastball is when he's been able to zip it a little bit on the inside part of the plate. But I think this is by far his best outing of the year. He came in with a nine ERA. But an awful lot of breaking balls will start taking their toll if you're up around that 90 pitch mark. There's a strike right in there. Two balls, one strike. Gerald Williams waits on deck. There are two out in the inning. He got away with a pitch up that time, but it was fouled away. It's two and two. Big Braves fan Laura Zachary watching a night out in Omaha, Nebraska, celebrating her 17th birthday. Never misses a game. Two balls, two strikes. Still two and two. Ned Yost, too, played several years here as a catcher with the Brewers, coaching at third. Glenn Hubbard at first. Ned told me last night on the bus ride back to the bought to the hotel that when he first got called up by, Mil by Milwaukee, he thought this was the most beautiful place he had ever seen.
A little chopper back to the mound. Look at all this. Boy, it's wonderful. No hits, no runs, no errors, one left. Profiles and courage out there. We go to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Two nothing Atlanta. As we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, if you just joined us, Greg Maddox pitched out of a bases loaded jam in the first inning and did a good job striking out Dave Nilsson with a Looks like a cutter down and in, and then got Marquise Grissom with either a cutter or a change up there. And also got a little help on a line drive double play when he was in a first and third jam with nobody out. Pitching with a lot of confidence here tonight. Dave Nilsson is the batter. Nilsson has struck out twice. Once swinging, once looking. Takes outside, one ball, no strikes. 2-7 and 2 for the Braves, 0-4 oh, and 0 oh for Milwaukee. Out in front, grounds a foul. Nilsson's missed a lot of Major League time with various injuries, not the least of which was 1995. He started the year on the disabled list after being bitten by a mosquito in Australia, and he contracted Ross River disease from that mosquito bite. Fly ball, center field, Andrew Jones drifts back. Whoa, one out. Ball's carrying, guys. Can't drift on a ball tonight, as Walt Weiss discovered. Wind's blowing enough, it's really pushing the ball over their heads. Here's Marquise Grissom has struck out, grounded a third. Rumor has it that he's on the block here, huh? Well, they've got they've got to make room for some guys. They made room for Vina tonight. He's going to have to play, and they're going to probably send Belliard out because they want him to play every day, but they're going to get Valentin back pretty quick, too, and they've got to have some place for him to play. And Marquise has what the, if not the biggest, one of the biggest contracts on this team. I think he's the highest paid player on their team, and they can't have him sitting on the bench. Talking to Jim Lefebvre about him today before the game, and Jim said that even though his average is down in the 230s, 240s, he said he has hit the ball hard since the get-go, since the season started, he has had very bad luck. Over the outside corner, two balls and a strength. And Marquise talked about what a big help Jim Lefevre has been for him. High chopper, that's going to sneak through there. Well, maybe it's starting to get even. That ball wasn't hit that hard, but in a perfect spot. Jeff Jenkins is the batter. Runner at first, one out. Jenkins split his year last year between Louisville, where he hit 330, and Milwaukee, where he hit 229. There's Jim Lefevre in the Brewer's jacket. Former Rookie of the Year for the Dodgers back in the 60s. Manager of the Mariners and Cubs at one time. Or at different times, I should say. Jenkins, another USC graduate in this game. He's out of Olympia, Washington. Resides in State Line, Nevada. Runner goes, fly ball, deep right field. Jordan on the run, he's got it. Marquise has to retrace his steps, tag the bag, throw to first, he is safe. Wild throw, Eddie Perez backed it up. He was running and he wanted to score. He got to second, then took a step back and then wasn't sure whether he had tagged the bag or not. So had to waste some time going back to tag it and just did make it a good throw, might have had it. Watch Marquise as he's going into second. Slid in there. Then not sure if he touched it going back or not. Thought, I better do this, and did, and then it almost cost him. But we talk about so many times about players not being spectators, but getting ready just in case there's a bad throw, and Eddie Perez was anything but a spectator on that play and saved the Braves another throwing error. 
Belliard stands in there. He's one out of two. But his cousin Raphael Belliard, our old pal, is watching tonight to see how he's doing. Hi, Rafi. We miss you. And he's doing okay. He's one for two. Well hit into right field again, but Jordan is there. And the inning is over. A couple balls hit hard, but nothing to show for it. One hit. No runs, no errors, one left. We have completed six innings now, and the Braves lead it two to nothing. Exciting finish. What a photo finish to this race between the chef, a hot dog, a bratwurst, and a sausage. It looked like the bratwurst backed into that one. You ever hear about the butcher that backed into the meat grinder and got a little behind in his work? No. <laughs> I just wondered. Uh, Gerald Williams will lead it off here in the seventh. Uh, I hope they don't call till about 10 o'clock. I need my rest. <laughs> Here's the pitch to Williams. Outside, one ball, no strikes. Well, you got to have some fun. Win, win, win. Braves up again, two to nothing. Yeah. Yeah, it's been that way, hasn't it? Gerald corks one into center. Grissom on the move, so is Burnett's. Marquise has it, one away. If he's really on the block, oh, I wouldn't mind having him back, Mr. Grissom. He's still a good player, very good player, and had another good year last year. Check up his numbers for you real quick. Last season, his first year in Milwaukee, hit 271, 10 homers, 60 RBIs, 13 stolen bases. Here's Greg Maddox, who's flirted with a couple of home runs to right field tonight. Fly deep to right. Then banged one off the wall just foul before tapping to the mound his last time. I uh, pop who wants it. Belliard going out Grissom coming in Belliard calls for it and has it for the second out. Two away for Walt Weiss. A lot of balls for Maddox tonight, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't either. I, I'm glad, as I said before, that he's not giving in to some of the hitters. And while he hadn't walked a batter in some 14 innings before tonight, when he walked Burnett in the first inning, I don't think it's a bad thing for him to walk a guy once in a while to get to the next hitter that might hit a ground ball for him. Walt Wise pops one down the right side. Burnett's a long run. He can't get there. Well, he is. Covered a lot of territory out there tonight. They have been working him. Oh, and one the count. Just showed you Jim Abbott's pitch count. He's being helped out by the Braves here the last couple of innings. They've been jumping on the first or second pitch a lot. Walt at 267 on the year. away from the catcher all the way to the screen a ball and a strike Montreal and the Phillies 2-2 in the eighth Mets lead the Pirates 3-2 in the eighth we'll have all the scores for you on the Delta scoreboard in the not too distant future Yeah, Nilsson. Yep. Abbott was uh, drafted in the first round by California out of uh, University of Michigan, but didn't sign until after his summer work with the U.S. Amateur team. Signed in late August, never pitched in the minor leagues. To later on in his career right. and battled his way back to the major league.
Two and two, the count. Started to go, held up, full count. Weiss waits and walks for the second time tonight. So Weiss is one for two with a couple of walks. That's playing the role of leadoff man to near perfection. And Brett Boone, who's three for three, is the batter. And that's going to be all for Jim Abbott, I think. They're going to make a double switch here. Rich Becker headed to the outfield. And Milwaukee Brewers manager Phil Garner makes the Bell South call to the bullpen. His job okay tonight. He went six and two thirds innings, allowing just two runs through one home run ball. He walked two. Rich Decker, by the way, is in left field. And Eric Plunk is the pitcher. Eric Plunk's been around a while. Veteran right-hander. In Seattle, then with Cleveland. Abbott did not strike anyone out. He allowed seven hits. And the runner at first base is his responsibility. Eighteenth appearance for Plunk. He's had rough going his last on the last road trip. He worked four innings on that trip, gave up four earned runs. That bumped his ERA up over three and a half. He started this season though he's a hard thrower he's always had a very good fastball but it's somewhat straight and he began this season sixth among active career leaders in strikeouts per nine innings pitched at eight and a half. Boone a perfect night. Let's see how he fares against Plunk who's six six two hundred twenty pounds. He's out of Corona California. He has bounced around all over the place. Oakland, the Yankees, Cleveland. Now Milwaukee. 104 pitches in the game for Abbott. Boone pops a foul back. And he's in the hole, 0 and 1. That's just a hit shy of getting up over the 300 mark. A little insurance would be nice indeed. It's 2 nothing Atlanta. A two run homer by Brian Hunter in the second inning. The difference in the game one and one the count. You know, this would be a pretty good town to play in, Joe, if you were a major league ball player. Don's always talked about it being one of his favorite stops in his career. They're knowledgeable baseball fans and very loyal to their teams. There goes the runner. There's the throw. The pitch was a strike and a stolen base for Weiss. His fourth and five tries. Now a base hit means a run, but Boone's in a one-two hole. Big two out steal, and he got a good jump. Plunk had a Somewhat high leg kick there on his delivery to the plate, and Weiss took advantage of it. Well, I say this would be a good place to live. The cost of living isn't high. It's not a huge media outlet, so you're not besieged with writers and broadcasters. Fastball a little high. Two and two. I'm going to have a great place to play next yeah. year across the street there. The traffic isn't as bad as it is in many other cities.
2 2 lashed foul into the upper deck still two balls two strikes Brett chased a bad pitch there but his fastball plunks fastball is so straight that from his height that's a good pitch to see you follow it so easily into the plate it's hard to lay off the 2 2 let up popped up Belliard calls for it and the inning is over no hits no runs no errors one left we go to the bottom half of the seventh inning your score two nothing Atlanta we go to the bottom half of the seventh inning the June chap talk includes features on Rudy Cienez Eddie Perez and John Smoltz call 1-800-700 chop subscribe to the official monthly magazine of the Atlanta Braves 1-800-700 chop Rich Becker leads off the bottom half of the seventh inning Simpson you're the most amazing human being I've ever <laughs> met they gave the hot dog the decision in that stupid race which caused me another doubt. <laughs> you just got to know how to pick your hot dog. Let's pick this. <laughs> Here. Oh, and won the count. Ground ball to first. Hunter Maddox covers. One up. So Rich Becker is retired. And the top of the order advances to the plate. Once again, Greg has only had one, one, two, three innings. He's having to work through some long innings at times, but tonight he's firing blank. By the way, another new ballpark attraction coming up when the Braves get home against the Dodgers, Joe. What's that? Strike. That's a strength. But it's oh. the uh, Turner Beach, a newly created thematic outdoor gathering spot for fans to soak up the sun during Braves game. That's a very convoluted way of saying it's a new bar. <laughs> <laughs> it's located on the right field club level patio over or patio if you prefer overlooking the field. On duty hospitality lifeguards beach music tropical palm trees a cabana bar serving cool frozen drinks new picnic patio area and specialty food concessions if you forget your suntan lotion Turner Beach will have a special novelty stand to purchase sunscreen products a little bit low as well as sunglasses beach towels and other beachwear all retail items will feature a Braves or Turner Beach logo. Think it'll be sunny there? That's that the Turner Field Beach, sure. Mm -hmm. I always need a beach to be sunny. Yeah, you do. I decided not to. <laughs> <laughs> For more information, please contact the Braves at 404-522-7630. I don't blame you after the butcher thing. Yeah, that's one of nights enough, I think. <laughs> Payoff pitch, tap toward third, a chopper to chipper. Strong throw gets him two down. Good play. He made a play like that last night, going to his backhand side, smothered a, an in-between hop, and made a strong throw. He was talking about his home run last night around the batting cage, and I said, I don't blame you for kind of watching that one. He said, well, I tried not to. He said, because I wanted to see. I, I did have to watch it because I wanted to see where it landed. But he admitted he got all of it. Almost destroyed our bus. Brian Banks, the hitter, he's hit into a force play. He has doubled. He has stolen a base. And he has walked. There's nothing like batting cage banter. I mean, it's, it can get kind of fun sometimes. BCB, we call it. Oh, yeah. That's a baseball term. People yeah. at home wouldn't know. But tonight, Klesko and Maddox got into a little verbal exchange over whose turn it was to hit in the cage or something. And Greg had his glasses on with his helmet on. 
And I guess because we're in Milwaukee, Fusco called him Squiggy. <laughs> <laughs> the 0-2 pitch. Upstairs, it's one and two. Ryan hit the ball hard three times last night. Maddox rolling merrily along here. Two and two, the count. Two out in the seventh. Rudy Cienez goes to work in the Atlanta bullpen. That's that. The inning is over, and Maddox picks up his sixth strikeout of the game. One, two, three, nothing doing. At the end of seven, the score. Braves two, Brewers nothing. Time to take a look at the Delta scoreboard. Some finals. Cincinnati beat Los Angeles 3-2 to two tonight. Montreal's at Philadelphia. They're tied going to the ninth inning. The Mets beat Pittsburgh 8-3. to three. Piazza, McRae, and Franco all homered in that game. Florida on top of Chicago. Wilson and Kotze with homers there. Colorado got one in the first. That's all the scoring so far. San Francisco just put seven on the board in the fifth inning. In the American League, Cleveland a winner. Toronto on top of Detroit, 5-3. Texas is at Tampa Bay. And Texas leading that one. Boston beating the Yankees in the bottom half of the eighth inning. We'll give you the rest of the scores in just a minute. Chipper Jones leads off against Eric Plunk. Takes high. Seattle just put eight on the board in the fourth inning. Ken Griffey Jr. with his 18th home run. Baltimore at Anaheim, Kansas City, Oakland a little bit later. Check out those results. Check out CNNSI.com, the ultimate address for sports. Hit hard. Go, oh, what a play. One up. Banks made a heck of a play to rob Chipper of an extra base hit. I like what I've seen of this guy. He's had a cup of coffee with this ball club over the last two or three years. But this year made the team out of spring training and he's making the most of his opportunity over there at first base. Switch hitter. Showing you a little glove work here to rob him of a hit. And he's ordinarily an outfielder, which makes the play at first base even more impressive. Low to Brian Jordan. One ball, no strikes. Final line on Jim Abbott, six and two-thirds innings, seven hits, two runs, two walks, no strikeouts, a homer. It was a two-run blast by Brian Hunter. That's the difference in the game. Three walks, I'm sorry. I think I said two. The 2-0 to Jordan. It's 3-0. I think we've probably seen the end of Maddox's night too as CNS continues to throw in the Braves bullpen and now the Brewers have a left hander up. Ground ball to second. That's a funny looking thing spinning all over the place. Two up. Odd bullpen here at County Stadium. Both bullpens are in the same area. The Braves have to warm up in an area a little bit farther away from the fence. Brewers, of course, have the catbird seat there right on the fence, but I've seen benches empty here for various reasons. It's kind of funny. It's like the bullpens have to run all the way in then to wherever the uh, pile-up is to get into a little shoving match. They could have just as easily done it out there. That's the what they should do is just shove around out there and save themselves all that <laughs> aggravation. Here's Andrew. One ball, no strikes. That does bring up an interesting thing. What would happen... If some verbal taunting started out there and a fight broke out, would the game go on? It's not on the field to play. Or does everybody then have to go running all the way out there and <laughs> climb that fence? That's a good point. 2-0. and oh. We'll find out tomorrow. I'll get Bobby Dews to yeah, we'll start be a, a fight out there. Be a short trip for Bobby. Burnett's again. Surrounds it, grabs it, and the inning is over. Nothing doing in the eighth for Atlanta. Eric Plunk has set down four men in a row. We go to the bottom half of the inning. Two nothing Atlanta. Bottom half of the eighth inning. Rudy Cienez gets the call. He'll face Jeremy Burnett, Jeff Cirillo, Dave Nilsson, 
Maddox seven innings five hits three walks six strikeouts everything else is zero. He lowers his earned run average from 502 to 4.48. Jim Abbott now has an earned run average of 7.86 which is horrible but not as bad as 9.11 which it was when the evening began. I think he has to be very encouraged with his outing, as does Maddox. They both needed a good one. But this game very much in doubt, so we need a good performance here from Sienas, and in all likelihood, John Rocker, Rocker in the ninth inning. They have two left-handed hitters, two up this inning, and Rudy will work to them. If he gets through that inning, then it's kind of interesting that Rocker will be facing right-handed hitters when he comes in. Doesn't seem to bother Bobby at all. He doesn't play that righty lefty stuff in his bullpen very often. I don't understand it. The Florida Marlins came from behind, beat the Cubs last night. They're beating them 4-1 in the seventh tonight. We can't beat them a, at all. What do they know that the Braves don't know? Burnett takes inside. One ball, no strikes. He's been on base every time. He's walked twice and reached on an air. Rudy looks in. The 1 0 swung, hit a mile, but foul. Pulled it way fouled on the right side. 1 and 1 the count. He's Glenn pretty Diamond, much. our producer tonight, Gary Lehman, our director. Sorry, Skip. Burnett's primarily a pull hitter. He pretty much falls back on that back leg, tilts his shoulders a little bit, and goes into launch mode. 38 homers last year. Line right field, base hit. So CNS starts inauspiciously. Jeff Cirillo, the batter. Third base hit. Top hand comes off the bat, but he goes out on a pitch that, watch Eddie Perez's glove. This pitch was going to be maybe outside and off the plate, and he still went out around it and pulled it into right field. Cirillo tonight has one hit. He didn't hit that one very hard, but his two outs, a liner to first into a double play, and a liner to left were hit very, very hard. This guy's a good hitter. Dave Nilsson on deck. Upstairs with a fastball. One ball, no strength. Pat Corrales was trying to get the attention, I think, of the outfielders. Chipper Jones was trying to help out to let them know not to let a ball get hit over their head here and let the tying run get into scoring position. They don't care about the runner at first, but I didn't see anybody back up, to be honest with you. 2 and 0. So Rudy's struggling a little bit here. There's a strike 2 and 1. Jim Lefevre was talking about Cirillo tonight, about how hard he works on his hitting. And he said he gets so low in his stance that the one thing Lefevre has to watch for is to make sure that the first move he makes isn't to just stand up and come up out of that crouch. Chase the runner back. But I don't think he's going anywhere now. Not down two in the eight. Two balls and a strike. Cirillo now at 291 for the year. Things are getting a little testy here. It's three and one. Nelson is next, then Grissom, then the pitcher. Rudy had plenty of time to warm up. It's not that chilly a night, so that's not the problem. Oh, he got it. I pop fly. Andrew Jones is there. Oh, I'm glad he swung at that pitch. One out. Looked like ball four, didn't it? Yep. Let's see. 
Yeah. No question. High and outside. And you can see his reaction to it. Rudy's last work came on the 22nd of May, three days ago, against the Cubs. Two-thirds of an inning, two hits and a run allowed. But a dangerous hitter here who has been tearing it up. 0 for 3 tonight, but he's been hot. I like the note on him in the media guide. Usually when you hear about a professional player buying a minor league team, it's noteworthy. But in their media guide, it says he bought the Australian winter league. <laughs> That's when you know you've got a pretty good salary. High and outside. One ball, no strengths. Pretty good month of May so far. It's even. One and one. I thought it was interesting reading the paper here yesterday. Joe, a note in the Milwaukee newspaper that Charlotte had moved ahead of Northern Virginia in the race for the Montreal Expo. And you would say, well, what's so significant about a speculation in a paper in Milwaukee, Wisconsin? Well, the commissioner's office is here, and he's the owner of this ball club, though his shares are in uh, trust now. But if anybody figures to be connected as to what's going on, it would be the newspaper people here. You'd think so. Good pitch. That would be great for us in one way because it would be a natural rivalry. In another way, it would be tough because it would cut into all the great Braves support that we've had down through the years in both North and South Carolina. I think there's something, too, to the fact that if they were to place the team in Washington, if they do move, Major League Baseball is fearful of a long drawn out suit that would probably be filed by Baltimore as infringing on their territory creating some problems for the Orioles and their attendance. Which is certainly true. Yeah. Hunter's going to play behind the runner with the big strong left handed hitter up there on a three two count. See if the runner goes with one out. Yep. High drive deep right tie game. Abbott cannot lose it. Maddox cannot win it. It's two to two. Told you the guy's been swinging the bat well. And he jumped all over that one. Second home run allowed by Rudy this year. The eighth for Nelson. He now has 23 RBIs and we're tied 2-2. Fastball up and out over the plate. He knew it. So did Brian Jordan, who never moved. That was crushed. Here's Marquise Grissom. The Braves had led since the second inning of the game. Eddie comes back. Will he have a play? Yes, he will. Two down. 4.05 the distance for Nelson's homer. The crowd boos in derision as the Braves throw the ball away as they throw it around the infield. Bobby was just thrilled by that Nelson homer, as you can see. See who comes out to hit here. Alex Ochoa, former New York Met, will be the hitter. He played last night. Got some at bats out in left field. He was two for four with a walk. He also had a double and a run scored. He's a guy who everybody thought was going to be a superstar when he first came to the major league. But it has never happened for him. He's doing all right this year hitting 289. He does not have a home run.
They've got some good-looking young players, though. I think some fans have a hard time keeping track of some of the players. Here. They just don't get enough attention here. Yeah. Like Jeff Sorello. He's one of the better hitters in the National League, as his average has proven over the last three or four years, but not too many people know about him. foul right side 0 and 1 Bobby may not play that way with the lefty righty situation skip but it might have been a good place there with two out or with one out rather at the time to have Rocker come in and extend himself a little bit by working an inning in two thirds to finish up the game Rocker is set out and now McGlinchey and Remlinger are up and Bob Wickman as you saw is throwing for the brew crew Ball and two strikes. Longtime voice of the Brewers on radio, our old pal Bob Euchre here at the ballpark tonight. Still hacking away. Boy, he's a beauty. What a great guy. Former Brave. Little chopper past the mound. That might be trouble. Weiss in, up, throws late. Walt made a great effort, but Achoa beat it easily. He hit it in the right spot with the right speed. Roll right over the top of the pitch. Good pitch from Rudy. But hit it out there where they weren't. Weiss made a great effort. Good speed for Ochoa. Legged it out. Belliard tonight. One for three. He singled up the middle. He popped a second. He's fly to right. He hasn't pulled anything all night long. Keep an eye on Ochoa. He might swipe one here. That's what Rudy's thinking. First home run allowed by Rudy Cienes since April 9th. Louis Gonzalez hit one. The sixth blown save for the Braves this year. High one ball, no strikes. The go ahead run at first, but there are two out in the inning. That's interesting that they've all come on the road. Rudy tonight with his fastball has been upstairs more often than not. Two and out of the count. Rich Becker is on deck hitting in the number nine spot. Hi uh, pop. Let's see if that stays in play. Brian Hunter has room and makes the catch battling that wind and the inning is over. But before the inning closes three hits produce two runs. Dave Nelson's two run homer was the big blow. One runner is left at the end of eight. We are tied to two. two. The ninth inning, and all of a sudden it's a tie ball game. Keith Lockhart is going to come on to pinch hit for Atlanta. A disappointed Rudy Cienes talking things over with Eddie Perez. And that's not just bemoaning your fate. You're talking about next time and what went wrong and what he hit and why he hit it. It's business, strictly business right now. Rudy was just up with some fastballs tonight and it cost him. Whitman, a veteran, used to pitch for the Yankees. He's a native of the Milwaukee area. I believe he's the only pitcher on their staff with a save. And I take that back. David Weathers has a couple, but Whitman has been their man in these situations. Keith Lockhart's going to pinch hit for Brian Hunter here. Hunter had a homer, a double, and a walk. But with the right-hander in here, Bobby Cox goes with Lockhart. 
who takes a fastball inside one ball no strikes. Whitman two and one nine saves a three point four seven earned run average. Javi Lopez has moved on deck to pinch it for Eddie Perez. Threw the fastball by him that time. It's two and one. Whitman's only allowed three earned runs in his last 17 innings. Looks like he's throwing the ball a little harder than he did last year. High fly ball. Pretty well hit right field. At the wall. That ball is gone. Keith Lockhart gives the Braves the lead. Maybe he's not throwing any harder than he did last year. Pinch hit. Home run for Lockhart. And just like that, the Braves get the lead back, and Rudy Cienes has a chance for what is known in the trade as a buzzard win. Here's Javi Lopez. Well, you sit the guy down that's homered and doubled and walked. You just put in another guy that can hit another homer. Just it's the night for that spot in the order. Boy, Boy right down the heart of the plate. Right out over the shed that covers the Brewers bullpen. None of them too happy about it either. There's a drive by Javi on the first pitch, and the Braves lead four to two. Another pinch hit homer. Back to back pinch hit home runs. That doesn't happen every day. No, it doesn't. And we're just talking about how well Whitman had been doing. And that was true until tonight. Well, he's not going to get a chance to do much better. Well, maybe he is. That's Dave Campbell. Bill Campbell. Bill Campbell, rather, who's coming out to talk to him. Dave's probably looking in tonight, though, and probably like to talk to him. Yeah. Another high pitch. Just a snap of the wrist for Javi. Well, you, you would almost say that Bobby Cox has pushed the right buttons tonight. He started Hunter. He rewarded him with a two-run homer. He pinch hits for Hunter. Despite the good night, Lockhart homers. He pinch hits for Eddie Perez, and Javi Lopez hits the first pitch he sees out of the ballpark. Javi was 0 for 2 as a pinch hitter on the year. And Lockhart was 3 out of 19 with no home runs. Remember, Keith just missed hitting a pinch hit homer yeah. in Atlanta the other night. He's beginning to get, to get his swing back. Grounder to third. Boot it. Cirillo with an air and a fast man is at first. And now Ryan Klesko comes up. And the wheels are coming off big time for Milwaukee in the ninth. Wasn't hit that hard, but Cirillo just killed it on the ground. Never came up into his glove and didn't have a play after the boot. Braves' only other pinch hit home run this year was Gerald Williams, April 14th at Philadelphia. Okay, I got one for you, Phil Sivens. When's the last time the Braves had back-to-back -back pinch hit home runs? There's a tester. And he'll figure out a way to come up with the answer. Even if he's got to make it up. Yeah, that's fine, too. <laughs> Wickman's still out there. There's double-barreled action in the bullpen for Milwaukee. Ryan had a double, a single, and a home run last night. Hit the ball hard really four times. His home run was 435 feet. And that looked like a long one until Chipper hit his. Ryan's bounced off the back wall out there between the grandstand and the stadium. Phil Garner gets booed as he comes out of the dugout. That's going to be all for Bob Wickman. He went no innings two hits two runs a runner on base is his responsibility and he really gets booed as he heads to the dugout despite his good work lately Milwaukee Brewers manager Phil Garner makes the Bell South call to the bullpen <laughs> left hander Mike Myers on to pitch for Milwaukee Ryan Klusko will stay in there to hit and will stay in the game and play first base. 
Meyer's pretty tough on left-handers. As you watch his delivery, you'll see why. One of the few side-arming or submarining left-handers I've ever seen. I don't know why other guys haven't tried it as an effective way to retire a left-handed batter. He doesn't often face more than just a lefty or two. But can be very effective because he's got a good sinker and slider. And he must have a rubber arm. The last three years, he's pitched in 83, 88, and 70 games. Two and two, a 2.70 earned run average last year for Milwaukee. And has not allowed an inherited runner to score. That's pretty impressive. He makes his home in Charlotte, North Carolina, born in Arlington Heights, Illinois. Bill's halfway there. Last time the Braves hit two pinch hit home runs in a game, July 22nd, 1996. Mark Whitten and Javi Lopez again. He's still working on the back to back. He'll be up all night to get the answer to that if necessary. That's why we love him so. What's this we stuff? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I forgot about the feud. <laughs> Let's see how Ryan hangs in on him. Oh, and one the count. Ryan was talking about his swing by the batting cage today when he wasn't calling Maddox Squiggy. Feeling good about the way he's hitting the ball to left center again. They got Williams picked off. Well, he didn't deserve to be on base anyway. That's a card steal. One three six three. I don't think that Myers had even made a move yet. Gerald just took no. off. Myers may have seen Gerald leaning a little bit, and that's what drew the throw. The 0 1 to Klesko. Swan missed. It's 0 2. You almost would rather Ryan just go up there and take two and go to left because you don't want this to throw him into a tailspin on his swing. Where he starts coming off the ball, but he's hard to hang in on. The 0 2 pitch. Ryan outside. Let's see. This game started at 7 05. It's now quarter to 10 local time. Yes. Just a moment. Okay. <laughs> the one two pitch. Two and two. He's vamping. He, he doesn't have the answer, so he's giving us other. Last time it happened in the major leagues, Carl Everett and Butch Husky back to back pinch homers in 1997 on May 11th, thanks to the Elias Sports Bureau for their help. They had a pretty good cut at that one. Two and two, the count. That's good for Keith. He had been fighting it a little bit. Not too many pinch hits this year so far. He's been having a lot better swing. I started to say about Fusco, he's been sitting there since 7.05 doing nothing. And he finally gets into the game. And <laughs> he has to face that. It's a little rough. Sidearm curve that started over there somewhere around first base. Long swing, couldn't reach it. Now you'll see him go to the sinker more with a right handed hitter up there, switch hitter batting right handed. A lot of curve balls to Ryan, and now trying to get. Walt to hit the ball on the ground. One and one the count. John Rocker will come on and try to close this thing down for Atlanta.
Fusco is saying to Lockhart, how come you got to hit against the right-hander? <laughs> I had to hit against that guy. Strike call. One and two. Walt's been very patient in the leadoff spot, taking a lot of pitches, trying to draw walks, get on any way he can. His average has gone up as a result, and he's got that 12-game hitting streak working, too. Myers was on his way to the dugout. He thought he had him struck out. I got Joe West's attention. Yes, it did. Yeah, it's almost like a bowler. He's like a left-handed bowler that throws it almost in the gutter and then brings it back into the pocket. I better make a good pitch here. Three and two. Two out, but two in. The line on Wickman, no innings, two hits, two runs, two homers. Well hit to left field by Weiss. Back goes Becker to the wall. That is gone. Walt Weiss. And I don't mean this unkindly, but of all people, hits a home run. His first since September 15th of 1997. How about that, sports fans? Hit it off Fernandez of Florida. 374-foot blast. That breaking ball was coming right into Walt's wheelhouse. And Phil Garner is on his way to the mound again, and that'll do it for Mike Myers. Who has a look for Joe West. Our new pitcher comes on. We'll break away for this message. Jim Pitsley on to pitch. Another big guy, 6'7", 230 pounder. They just got him from Kansas City. He's out of Dubois, Pennsylvania. No less. Last year at Kansas City, one and one, a 6.59 earned run average. Two years ago at Kansas City, five and eight with a 5.46 earned run average. And he'll face Brett Boone, who is three out of four. Home run row over there in the dugout now. Three this inning. I would love to know what Eddie Perez just said to Walt White. Because he's a pretty good barber, Mr. Perez. He can get on you pretty good. Pitsley completes his. Warm-up tosses. Here's Brett Boone. Pitsley, the fifth pitcher of the night, the third of the inning. All the Braves' runs have come as a result of homers tonight. Boone, three for four, looks at a strike. For Walt, that was his 24th Major League home run. His season high was eight in Colorado in 1996. Little looper into short right field again. Boone has worn him out over there. His fourth hit of the night. This falls under the category of swing hard in case you hit it, and then if you just brush it, it'll still go far enough for a hit. Brett was looking to left, and it went to right. Big swing here. Head. Come off, <laughs> comes off the ball a little bit and it went about 145 feet. Well, everybody else is hitting him out. So you start wanting to. He's right at 300 now with a four for five night. Yeah, that'll start balancing out some of those hard hit outs that he had earlier in the season. Chipper Jones hitless in four ABs. Takes high, one ball, no strikes. Five, 11, and two for the Braves. Two, eight, and one for the Brewers. There were 15,000 plus here at one time. Ground ball headed for right field, a base hit. Around second is Boone racing for third. The throw will be cut off, and they're on the corners with two out. And Brian Jordan, who is 0 for 4, will have a chance to add to his team leading 41 RBIs if he can right deliver. Field. Brian Chipper did Jordan. that last night. He rallied. He had an 0 for 4 working and got the home run, his last at bat. 
tonight. He picks up a hit. You got to be greedy. We've said that before talking about games where you think well the Braves already have a three run lead. That's good. Let's go finish it up. But as a hitter there are too many nights where you don't get any hits and you want as many at bats as you can get here in an effort to get another hit. The four hits for Brett Boone equals a career high. It's the second time he's done it in about two weeks. The 1 0 pitch to Jordan. It's high. It's 2 0. He has got an acre of room to work with on the right side. Belliard's playing him up the middle. First baseman has to hold him on. The pitch. I again 3 and 0 oh, Andrew Jones would be next so Pitsley so far hasn't been the answer either Jordan's probably swinging here if he grooves a fastball I'm sure Brian will be all over it he doesn't the bases are loaded you know there's one and I'm not just talking about our team but any team as Campbell the pitching coach comes out again a closer in this spot has to view things sort of with mixed emotions as it stands now he's got a three run lead and a chance for a save and that's how you get paid as a closer is how many games you save so in a way you want it to stay at three runs but you want to make sure you win the game so you wouldn't be all that disappointed if Andrew hit one out here no you shouldn't be you shouldn't be if if that's all that you're concerned about out there in the bullpen right now is whether or not you get a, another save in your belt then you're out there for the wrong reasons but it would be less than human to not think about it right Keith Lockhart would be next he started it all check swing pop 0 and 1. Pitzley's got a split finger pitch, but he hasn't been ahead in the count until now to be able to use it. Outside, a ball and a strike. Come to a new team, you got a lot of emotions flowing through you, trying to make an impression. Steve Rack on the outside corner, one and two. And he can get out of this inning feeling pretty good about it, not allowing a run. But the other side of it is he could hang one of those breaking balls, and his first impression would be a grand slam. That would not be so good. The one two. Little chopper back to the mound should end the inning and does. But the Braves do all right. Three solo homers, two of them pinch hit. Also, two singles in the inning. We go to the bottom half of the ninth inning. 5-2 Atlanta. And Coming up next on TBS, Clint Eastwood and Shirley McLean starring two mules for Sister Sarah right here on the Superstation. That's a good one. And some changes here for Atlanta. Randall Simon is in the game to play first base. Now catching for the Braves, number Javi eight. Lopez is the catcher. And John Racker, the pitcher. Leading off the bottom of the ninth for the Brewers. Left field. Brett Boone Brett stays in the game Becker. at second base. Get that first guy. And he faces the Left hand hitting Rich Becker. Does John. And there's a pretty good start. Good live fastball. His last work came three days ago against the Cubs. An inning and a third for Rocker. Two strikeouts. And got a save. Curveball stayed high and inside. One and one. 
Becker, a much traveled player, has been with Minnesota, hit 291 there in 96 with 12 homers. 264 in 97. Then went to the Mets. And Baltimore last year he had a dreadful year, hit 190 at New York and 204 at Baltimore. Hitting 267 coming into this game, 261 now. Only a 158 average against Rocker by left-handers. And that goes down a little bit as Becker is out on strikes. Thanks to Phil Sivens and our friends at the Elias Sports Bureau who really do a great job keeping track of statistics in baseball. It's the first time the Braves have hit back-to-back -back pinch hit home runs in Braves history. Milwaukee, Boston, and Atlanta. How about that? Going further, it's the first time two pinch hit homers in the same inning. Oh. Some records made here tonight. A strike to Mark Loretta, Loretta, who is one for four tonight. Braves two outs away from a victory. Little looper caught by Boone. Two down. John Rocker's done a good job of coming into games and finishing them up in the last few weeks. But it's odd that most of his troubles this year and what's contributed to his ERA has been work on the road. He's pitched nine scoreless innings at home, allowing only one hit. But on the road, it's been a little bit of a different story, an ERA over five. Brian Banks turns around and hits right-handed. Now, he's a 267 right-hand hitter, 362 left-handed. You see his numbers on the night. And that'll do it right back to Rocker. And the Braves have beaten the Milwaukee Brewers with a late inning explosion. Final score, five to two. Good job by Rocker, but our AutoZone player of the game is Keith Lockhart, who came through with the leadoff pinch hit homer in the ninth inning. After the Brewers had tied it up on a Nielsen home run, Lockhart pinch hit for Brian Hunter and promptly deposited one right over the Brewer bullpen for what proved to be the game winner. The Braves went on to hit two more home runs in the inning, but Keith Lockhart, our AutoZone player of the game tonight, and we'll be back to wrap things up at County Stadium right after this.